If you think recent games are getting too easy, Dark Souls is the game that you should get. If you don't like challenging games, then you just should just stop this video right now. Now for those of you that don't know Dark Souls, I'll explain. Dark Souls is a game developed by From Software, originally under the title Project Dark, and it is also a spiritual successor of Demon Souls, which is also a spiritual successor of the Kingsfield games, and possibly Shadow Tower. Anyways, From Software decided to take elements from Demon Souls and put them in this game. This ranges from bosses looking familiar but having different skins up to same game mechanics. But enough of the bullshit. Let's dive right into Dark Souls. The story is never fully explained in Dark Souls. You have to piece everything yourself by reading through item descriptions, since there is very little cutscenes within the game. So I'll try my best to explain the important parts of the story from the wiki. Long ago, the world was once ruled by everlasting dragons. However, the first fire has been ignited and four powerful lord souls have risen. Nito, the first of the dead, he is the god of death and disease, the which Izaleth is the godmother of pyromancy along with her daughters of chaos. Gwyn, the lord of sunlight, who has the power of the sun and lightning. The furtive pygmy, the creator of humans and whose lord soul is the dark soul. The four lords challenged the dragons along with the help of Seath the Scaleless who betrayed his own kind and eventually won, thus starting the rule of Gwyn and the Age of Fire. However, over time the fire started to wither and eventually it died. As a result, a curse started to spread among the humans and the accursed dark sign started to appear. Those bearing the dark sign are revived from the dead, but they lose their humanity. And the dead that are in danger in turning hollow are taken to the undead asylum, where they are locked away for all eternity. This is where your player comes in. He eventually learns of a prophecy about a chosen undead leaving the undead asylum in pilgrimage and to eventually succeed Lord Gwyn. You get taken to Lordran, the land of the ancient lords to ring the two bells of awakening and later meet the primordial serpent King Seeker Frant, who wants you to succeed Lord Gwyn and prolong the Age of Fire. But another primordial serpent Kaith says he wants to usher in an Age of Darkness. As you come to your own conclusion by the end of the game, link the fire to prolong the Age of Fire or to abandon it and usher in an Age of Darkness. Now for a 2011 game, it's not very groundbreaking, but it's still pretty damn good. It has godlike scenery into the dark and claustrophobic areas of the dungeons you are going to be visiting. It's very atmospheric along with all the places you visit, such as the forest, castles, poisonous swamps, and cemeteries. Each area having their own distinct personality and it never feels the same. And if you ever notice that there's also very little music, they usually only play during boss fights at the Firelink Shrine and at the Ash Lake. It's also very atmospheric as the land themselves convey the emotions of the game, not music. Dark Souls is notorious for its difficult gameplay, but come on, how hard can it be? Okay, so it's hard. So, to start off, you make your character at the beginning of the game. You can choose this class in which every one of their starting stats are different. And the great thing is, is that just because you chose one class doesn't mean you have to stick with it the entire playthrough. 
You can have it where it starts off with a magic build, but you can have it so you level up your character to be a straight up melee fighter. This makes it so you don't have to start over every time just to play a different type of character. You can also choose a different gift to help you or not on your journey, like the pendant, just fucking useless. The Dark Souls gameplay is simple yet complex. The combat isn't overblown with special acrobatics like Dragon's Dogma, but it feels like I'm actually having a fight with enemies because each weapon moves realistically. You have a normal attack, strong attack, block, and parry. Each one of those actions takes up stamina, and if you use it all up, you'll leave yourself wide open and can get yourself killed. You have to plan each attack so that it doesn't happen. Rolling also takes up your stamina, and what rolling is is pretty much your dodging, but it can't always be reliable. Each equipment that you have on increases your, your overall carry weight. The heavier you are, the slower you roll. This game got rid of the item burden that Demon Souls had, so it's easier on the whole weight system, but if you have on really heavy gear, you can't expect to roll that easily. This game is also mostly fair, since you can parry and backstab. But so can your enemies. Whatever you can do, so can they. Making even the earlier parts of the game difficult. Although at times, the game is just annoying. Like take this for example where there are two creatures with lightning weapons. Normally, I could take care of them, but there are archers that are firing huge arrows at you, so I can't even focus on the enemies in front of me without worrying about the archers. In a 2D game, this could work, but in a 3D game, I won't know that an arrow is heading my way without losing focus on the enemies. It's just ridiculous. All over Lordran, you'll find bonfires. For the most part, they are your safety zones. This is where you level up your character, and once you get the right items, you can store items, upgrade items, restore equipment, teleport, reverse hollowing, and kindle the fire. It's also a spawn point every time your character dies. At these bonfires, you can level up your character, which becomes really important. You can increase your overall health, stamina, equip load, strength, dexterity, resistance, and magic. Certain items require a certain strength or dexterity to use properly. So even if you get a badass weapon that deals a large amount of damage, you won't be able to use it if you don't have the required perimeters. I like this system because it prevents your character from being insanely overpowered early on and you have to work your way to even use the weapon. But make sure that when you level up, spend your points wisely as there is no way to reallocate your points. So whatever your skill is when you increase it, is permanently that number. You can have each skill reach 99 and the max level your character can be is level 710. But there's no point in doing this since it requires a ridiculous amount of souls just to level up once and each stat has a soft cap, like endurance. Once you get it to level 40, your stamina stops increasing, but your equip load keeps increasing. Leveling up your character uses souls that you collect from enemies after you kill them, but the souls are also used as currency to buy items, upgrade your equipment, and repairing your equipment. But if you die, you lose all of your souls and you have to start from scratch. Same goes for your humanity. But if you manage to reach the same point as your character dies, you'll be able to get all of your souls. However, if you die before collecting your souls, you permanently lose all of your souls, which gives you a feel of urgency when you lose about 10,000 souls early in the game and you needed to get it back. Now, humanity is different. Every time you die, you become a hollow. Humanity is used to become a human once more, and once you're human, you can kindle a bonfire to hold more Estus Flasks. Estus Flasks is an essential healing item you find in the Undead Asylum. You hold five at the beginning, but if you kindle a bonfire, you can hold more, and every time you rest out a bonfire, your Estus Flask replenishes. But restoring your humanity also puts you in online mode. 
Once you become human, you have the ability to summon other players to help you in boss fights, which can become useful. Or, you could help others by using the white soapstone, and you don't have to be human to use that. However, trying to summon someone or being summoned is incredibly restrictive, as the client's level must fall within approximately 10% of the host level and the boss has to be alive at heart. So most likely go solo and plus trying to connect to anything is a pain in the ass. Now you can summon NPCs if you don't have online capabilities. You'll still have some help, but at the same time, you can be invaded. Other players will invade your world and their objective is to kill you. So you have to prevent that. And much like how you can summon other NPCs, NPCs can invade you. On the one hand, it's a cool system, going on a journey, then have someone suddenly come in to prevent you from moving forward, and that are actual people, making them a lot less predictable than NPCs. It makes things much more intense. On the other hand, it's a pain in the ass. I'll just be minding my own business and just while I'm getting so close to getting to another area, I'm suddenly blocked off and have to deal with an invader. And I suck at PvP, so I die most of the time and have to start over. There's also the problem with hackers. I had to fight against someone who had control of my camera so it was up close to my face so I couldn't see anything and I didn't have any control over it. That never happened previously. And he had a weapon that cursed me which reduces your overall health to half and put an egg of vermifuge on my head which halves the amount of souls I receive from enemies and none of the weapons you ever receive has that kind of abilities. Now, there are covenants spread throughout the land of Lordran that you can join. They are more for the online system as some of them are geared towards PvP or one of them prevents PvPs. But if you do not want that kind of trouble, just stay hollow or just turn off online on Steam, Xbox Live or Sony Network. It will make life a bit more easy. The boss fights are awesome. They are inventive, memorable, they can be very big and challenging. So chances are, you're gonna die. A lot. Like the Gaping Dragon. I don't know how that thing's even alive. Even the regular enemies can be intense to fight and are even creative themselves, making them really inventive and memorable. Some enemies have elemental effects, so you could get poison, bleed, or the weapons have lightning effects. Which is one other reason why this game can be really hard. I'm not going to talk about the ending since I want people who never play this game to experience the end for themselves. The gameplay is difficult, but something about it makes it really addictive. So even after dying 30 times, throwing my controller across the room, I want to get through this game and see to the end. Dark Souls is the game that people should get if they believe that newer games are getting too easy. Now I don't believe in a number rating system since every game has their flaws, so I'll be going off with a different rating system, but most likely it'll be temporary until I think of a better one. So my rating for this game is a buy it.